The following tutorial is brought to you by wholeloops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, Realist Puppet in the game. The ultimate kick and snare mixing trick that will change your mix downs forever. No matter what style of music you're trying to mix down, I guarantee your kicks and snares will benefit from a bit more clarity. I'm going to begin by playing an example, and you'll hear the kicks and snares are a little bit buried underneath the rest of the sounds. So, to bring those out, we're going to begin by physically bringing them out of the rest of the groups, putting them into their own groups. So this is our snare. It's called rim in this song. And then we're going to grab our kicks. We can leave the 808 down here. We'll just uh, leave that like that. So our 808 is alone. Take these, toss them in a group, turn the group down to minus five so they were back in volume where they were at before. And cool. So now we are going to take everything that is in our kick and snare. I just scroll to the bottom, Command G, and this is where Ableton 10 is super clutch. We just took everything else that was already grouped and organized and grouped that. And then we're going to do some ducking on this one. So the next thing you're going to do is grab the volume and zoom in on where your first kick is. It may help you to freeze and flatten them, uh, but if you have sidechain compression going, it's still gonna give you that error message about how you can't, uh, but you don't need to. We're just gonna go and grab this and do a little bit of sidechain compression with the volume control. Now you'd be like, Reed, why don't you just load up a sidechain compressor? It's so much easier, you don't have to do this all. And the difference is right here. This is pre-active, not reactive. A sidechain compressor, even with the attack all the way as fast as it possible, 0.001, you have it, whatever yours says, that is still coming in after the kick, and it is so crucial for everything else to be ducked down before the kick hits so that that kick hits over top of just about silence, and that kick comes smashing through right into your listener's eardrum, and they get super excited about it. So uh, we're just going to kind of bend this around, figure out what sounds good, and just rinse and repeat for every kick in this song. Now this one, I did a little bit of uh, off the grid kind of work, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of off the grid ducking to make sure it lines up, but fortunately that line comes up right there to help you see what you're doing. A little curvature here, a little curvature there. Uh, now you also may be wondering, wait a second, do I have to do this for every kick in my song? The answer is yes, but we have copy and pasting for that. So as you can see, our kick is already jumping out quite a bit more. Let's uh, continue down the path to glory here and just do the whole measure. Let's... Uh... Are you a music producer looking for that perfect chord progression to start your next hit? Do you struggle with chords, piano, and music theory? Then we've got the product for you. Introducing Poppin' Progressions 2 the sequel to our organic MIDI sample pack filled with over 50 loops organized by key and scale for your convenience. Just grab a Poppin' Progression and drop it in your session. Poppin' Progressions 2 is available now only at wholeloops.com. All right, so we did one measure. Let's go ahead and, oh, I'm sorry, we haven't done the rim yet. Let's do one more duck for the snare. It actually kind of helps doing it over audio instead of MIDI because you get a much better gauge of how long your sample is and you can draw your line in to better uh, kind of help that. And we're gonna just curve that right up there. You don't really hear this uh, little dip before it so much because of how steep the curve is. And boom, that snare comes right through and taps you right in the eardrum. Makes you feel real nice. Um, this solves so many 
problems in your mix down that you probably didn't even realize you were having. And we just copied and pasted this. This is extra easy for me because my song is only uh, 30 seconds long. Uh, but it would just be more of the same copy, paste, copy, paste. But man, let's, uh, we're not even finished. Let's just take a listen to what we've done. So we're already a good part of the way there. There's just one extra step that we're going to take, and that is down here on the 808. We're actually going to pull this 808 group out of this ducking group. We're going to do something else to this, and that is going to be our, let's just pull up EQ8. And this is going to be the same principle. We got a low cut here. Let's turn the uh, Q down. Gain's going to get automated, and the frequency, we'll put it at like 200 or so. We just want to cut the lows out of this kick. And uh, I believe if you hit this little plus right here, give this a nice copy and take our automation, give it a little paste, grab the whole thing, bring it back down to zero because we took that off our volume channel and it was a little higher than this. And then we're going to go and just delete the rim out of the loop and then we can just loop it again. And what you are left with is a very clean version of what you started with. My friends, enjoy this sacred knowledge. You now have the keys to the kingdom. May your mix downs forever be blessed. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time with another tutorial. Peace out.